This is one of the most important computers in Apple's history, and arguably computer history. This is considered the very first personal computer, and a huge turning point for Steve Jobs and Apple. And today we're gonna to see if we can bring it back to life. See, this is an original Macintosh from 1984, and it hasn't been started in at least a decade, maybe even longer. And I can't help but wonder, what would this have been like to use? What made it so special? Why was Steve Jobs determined to make this work? Well, the only way to find out is to see if we can boot this thing and see how far personal computers have come in 40 years. This is gonna be dope. This is my 1984 Macintosh. It says here model number M0001WP512K. 512 kilobytes of RAM. Crazy. And even crazier for 1984. At the time, Apple was primarily selling the Apple II that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak had built together. And as a company, Apple were in a rush to make something new. But Steve Jobs doing what Steve Jobs does got mad passionate about the Macintosh. But compared to other computers at the time, it was pretty overpriced and underpowered. There's a whole bunch of other reasons why Steve ended up leaving Apple in the 80s. But Steve Jobs would leave Apple to start Next Computers and to heavily invest in Pixar. And flip, am I glad he did? Because we got some bangers from Pixar in the early days. But it does signify a big turning point for Apple and personal computers as a whole. And this mammoth, holy dooly. And this iMac D3, well, not specifically this model, the one before it, was Steve Jobs' first computer when he came back to Apple in the 90s. Both of these computers are very special to me. And the iMac G3 holds the title for the reason that my channel even exists to begin with. But for the longest time, I've been very keen to try and start this Macintosh 512. There's a couple pretty important reasons why I haven't been able to use the Macintosh yet. Firstly, I'm missing a mouse, which is a pretty important accessory because this was the first personal computer with a graphical user interface that you would control with a keyboard and a mouse. I can't even imagine a world of computers without displays and graphical user interfaces. So I'm very keen to see how it stacks up to today's computers. But yeah, I was missing a mouse, not good. And the other thing I was missing was the operating system. See, the Macintosh booted pretty much everything off its floppy disk. And I don't know about you, but I don't have a lot of floppy disks lying around. And I also don't have a 1980s operating system. But thank goodness for the internet, because I was able to find a mouse and a set of floppies with apparently an operating system on them. Is this thing brand new? That looks brand new, right? We've got a keyboard, which is great. Check it out, that's so wild. Now I inherited this little cutie from my grandpa. I'm not exactly sure how my grandpa got it, whether this was his original Macintosh from the 80s or if he bought it later on. But what I do know is I got my love for old tech from my grandpa. I remember seeing this Macintosh in his garage, which he had filled with the most random gear. <laughs> but my grandpa gave me this thing when I was like 15, 16, and I have yet to see it run its operating system. Now the good news is I know that it starts. I know that it boots up, but that's as far as I've gotten. I haven't been able to actually use this thing and I'm very excited to try and do that today. I'm kind of nervous. I have no idea if this thing will actually boot. Who knows if the floppy drive works. I haven't had great experiences with disk drives in general, but if we can get this to work, I'm gonna be flipping stoked. Okay, let's uh, let's turn it on. Okay, I just need to plug it in. Also, this might sound crazy, but did anyone ever call these jug cables? Like a jug lead? I don't know why that's like ingrained in my head from my childhood. Is that inappropriate? Plug this jug in. I wonder if I should just start it first. Yeah, we should just turn it on. Here we go, flick the switch. Hello. Now I don't know if you can see it, but it shows a floppy disk missing and it's trying to read a floppy disk, which is a good start. That's a good sign because we have a floppy disk. Let's plug the mouse in and see if that works. I'm not gonna lie, this thing is pretty dusty. Yes, let's go. Again, I don't know if you can see that. Let me uh, film it with my phone. Yeah, let's go. Sick, okay, the mouse works, which means we now just have to try out the floppy disk. Okay, make sure to always follow the directions. There's a arrow there. Okay, that didn't feel great. Uh, Oh, what the frick? Uh, am I putting it in the wrong way? I feel like such a noob right now. I have no idea what it's doing. Wait, it doesn't go all the way in? I don't know why I expected it would go all the way in. <laughs> oh, what the heck is that noise? That freaks me out, dude. It must go in further, surely. Ho, ho, huh, nothing is happening. Again, I'm probably doing something wrong here. <laughs> oh. 
That's awesome. I honestly didn't expect it to just start just like that. No way, man. This is so wild. I cannot get over the fact that it just worked just like that. After all these years, oh my gosh, that's 40 years old. What the heck? <laughs> Not only that, I can't believe how similar this operating system is to macOS today. So sick, that is so sick it's working. I'm so glad it's working. Okay, so now that we know this works, let's have an explore of what is essentially macOS, but it's called system three. Immediately, like first impressions, the refresh rate is so good. Like <laughs> I did not expect the user experience to feel this smooth. Like this is, it's wild. And this mouse must be brand new because it is working flawlessly. And you'll notice it's really not that different to macOS now. So we've got the top bar, which has file edit view special. Uh, special? And cleanup shut down? I guess those functions are special. And of course it's got trash, which is awesome. <laughs> and those of you who know your Apple history will notice straight away that the windows are essentially the same as Mac OS 9. The operating system that I've got running on my old iBook that I just used to Photoshop on, it's essentially the same in terms of design and layout. I will give Apple credit there. The fact that 40 years later, Mac OS still looks and feels like this is pretty impressive. Cause if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. So let's have a look at some of the built-in apps. Uh, we have alarm clock. Okay, I guess that's alarm clock. <laughs> we have the calculator. So this 40 year old Macintosh had a calculator before the iPad. What else we got? Chooser? I'm not sure what Chooser is. Ah, okay, cool. There's a bunch of ports on the back of the Macintosh that can be used for printers and other accessories, which is pretty sick. Again, this is technically the first personal computer, or at least a PC as we know it today. What else have we got here? Control panel. Let's see what settings we've got. Okay, that's surprisingly a good amount of settings. And yo, the design language is so interesting. It's so tactile looking, like this speaker volume is literally a fader. So cool. Ah, and they had support for a mouse and a tablet, which is epic. RAM cache, okay. Key repeat, double quick speed, all right. And the desktop pattern, let's have a look. Ooh, that's nice. Oh wait, you could change the patterns? Ah, oh, that's so sick. Dark mode, but it's 1984. <laughs> what else have we got? We've got key caps. I don't know, I don't know what that means. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I wonder if I could use this keyboard as a keyboard for my MacBook because it is tactile. Oh, that's so nice. Again, I, I know this sounds wild because it's only 40 years, only 40 years, but like how smooth everything runs is so impressive to me. Gosh. So next up, I want to check out the apps on the floppy disk because it looks like there could be a few bonus things for us to check out. Ooh, okay. So we've got Finder. That doesn't work. No worries. We've got Mac paint yes let's go yo oh this throws me back so hard but this is so reminiscent of like microsoft paint on windows xp windows 2000 ah, i appreciate that even though the macintosh has a black and white display that they still worked really hard to make it feel like it was customizable still so even though you can't set a background color you can set a background texture the fact that the guy who wrote the software thought hey we can still have a background tool we just need to Make it patterns instead of colors. It's very sick. Uh, I'm not much of an artist, obviously, as you can see. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm drawing here. Oh yeah, there it is. Woo! Bro, I am an artist. <laughs> oh, text tool, let's go. Macintosh. Can I change the font? Oh, I can change the font. Oh, what a banger. That's a classic. I'm telling you, that's a classic font. Let's see what else we've got on this floppy disk. We have something here called woodcut. Wait, this is some art there. Oh my gosh, dude. Iconic, iconic, that's so sick. How did someone do that with a mouse? But that means this, Steve Jobs, will probably be... <laughs> that's so cool. No way, dude. That's so sick. Ah, there we go. Now I wish I had a few more games and things to check out. Uh, but I have no idea how to transfer files onto this thing other than with a floppy. And I have no way to burn a flop, burn a floppy, make floppies. But I cannot get over how sick this thing is. And I'm so stoked that it still works. You know, a part of me wishes that grandpa was here to see this thing start up. He passed away when I was like 15, 16. And he really did have like a massive impact on my life and the things that I found interesting. Every time I stepped into his cluttered garage, I was kind of overwhelmed by all the cool things that he was working on. And it really is special to me that the Macintosh still starts and still boots because it sits on the shelf as a reminder of my grandpa and the stuff that he gave me. 
my entrepreneurial spirit, my love of technology, my want for adventure. That all came from my grandpa. Yeah, man, part of me is uh, wishing that he was here right now to goof around with this Macintosh with me. But something tells me he would want to go further with it. He would want to try and do something even crazier with it. Of course, I want to see what other experiences and games were made for the Mac back in the 80s, but also stuff that's being made now. There's, there's a lot of people making some cool stuff out there. But, and if you know this channel, I also kind of want to know if it can run Minecraft. Now, I'm just going to set the expectations here. I don't think this thing can run Minecraft. It, de it, it definitely cannot run Minecraft. It can just run Mac Paint. <laughs> but I wonder what it would be like to write some software for the Macintosh 512. What would coding for System 3 be like? And if we could code and transfer files over to it, could we build like a 2D Minecraft for the Macintosh 512? Oh boy, I could be getting in over my head here. I'm gonna have to buy and learn a few things to make that happen. But if that's something you legends are interested in seeing, make sure you subscribe.